Turkey, His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. Please be seated. Good morning, excellencies, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India and Indian Industry, I'd like to welcome you all to the India-Turkey Business Summit 2017. We're honored today with the presence of our two powerful global leaders who've come together to discuss business and other opportunities in the present geopolitical scenario. We'd like to welcome the President of the Republic of Turkey, His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. I now request Mr. Pankaj R. Patel, President Fiki, and Chairman and Managing Director, Cadilla Healthcare, to formally welcome the gathering. The visionary leader and the hope for all Indians for the new India, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, <laughs> His Excellency Recep Tayyip Argoan, the President of Republic of Turkey, <laughs> senior officials and business leaders from the India and Turkey, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Indian industry and FIKI, the India's Apex Industry Association, I welcome the most esteemed dignitaries for being here with us at India-Turkey Business Summit. Our relationship goes long back with halwa, which we all enjoy, actually came from Turkey, and the spices also came from Turkey. The spice market we all know is very much. Sir, Turkey's ge geostrategic location and India's rising economic stock under the sterling leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji makes us an ideal economic partners. The list of sectors to collaborate is endless and so the business opportunities for both India and Turkish companies to collectively reap the gain from each other. Before concluding, I would like to quote Mustafa Kemal Atiruk, the architect of modern and vibrant Turkey. He had said, victory is for those who can say, victory is mine. Success is for those who can begin saying, I will succeed and say, I have succeeded in the end. With these words, I would once again welcome Honorable President Sri Argoan for the and also Honorable Prime Minister for the path-breaking state visit to India. Thank you very much. Tashikurur, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Mr. Umar Tihad Vardan is the president and also serves as chairman of both Natural Gas Equipment Industrialists and Businessmen's Association. He's also with the Turkey US Business Council. May I now invite him to address the gathering? Sayın Cumhurbaşkanım, Hindistan Cumhuriyeti'nin Başbakanı Sayın Modi, His Excellency the Prime Minister of the Indian Government, Distinguished Ministers, Turkish Indian Business World's Distinguished Representatives. First of all, I would like to extend you my deepest respect on behalf of myself and on behalf of Foreign Economic Relations Board. Our President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is paying this official visit to India, the star of Asia, and on this occasion we have organized this summit together with our Indian partners. And I would like to thank you very much for being here. Distinguished Prime Minister of India, distinguished ministers, distinguished Indian friends. 
In order to develop the business relations between Turkey and India, we've been working for 31 years now, and our president has accredited our organization. Our activities are being carried out by our business councils. Today, we have 134 business councils, and 127 of those are specific to countries, which means Turkey's foreign economic relations are being fostered thanks to 124 for business councils. Turkish Indian Business Council is one of those 134 business councils and 153 businessmen are accompanying this delegation today. Among those people, we have the representatives of the most important business organizations of our country. And we have senior managers of other valuable organizations of our country. And I would like to emphasize that the group of people here, the group of people here are representing the most valuable business sectors of our country. Uh, we're all looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in the B2B relations and meetings. Our purpose is to increase the existing trade volume, obviously. So we're very hopeful uh, about the, the future of our trade relations. And we believe this is going to be a first step and the first uh, meeting opportunity for all of us. We're going to follow up the process. And I hope that the continuous and efficient relationship between the two countries shall contribute to foster and double the trade and political relations between the two countries. His Excellency the President and His Excellency the Prime Minister, His Excellency the Ministers and the distinguished representatives of the business world of the two countries. Thank you very much for honoring us with your presence in this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Vardan. I'd now like to request Madam Shobana Kamineni, President CII and Executive Vice Chairperson, Apollo Hospital Enterprises Limited, to please address the gathering. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, His Excellency, Mr. Erdogan, Honorable President of the Republic of Turkey, my colleagues from FIKI and ASOCHAM, distinguished business leaders from Turkey and India, ladies and gentlemen, two leaders of G20 economies with a combined GDP of three trillion represent the driving force for Indian and Turkish industry. Honorable Prime Minister Modi and Your Excellency, President Erdogan, we are indeed privileged to engage with you today. Prime Minister Modi is a pre proactive friend of Indian and global industry and is guiding the transformation of India. His personal engagement can deepen and strengthen India's partnership with Turkey, our historical warm and close friend. Your Excellency, President Erdogan, your visit adds a new dimension to the bilateral economic ties between our two countries. The convergence of our two economies has immense potential across many platforms. Turkey can be India's gateway to opportunities from energy connectivity in Central Asia to vibrant markets in the EU. Likewise, India represents a powerful destination for Turkish industry in its infrastructure uh, manufacturing and service aspirations our new cities and infrastructure alone are a three, $3 trillion dollar opportunity for the next two to three years. India's strengths in IT dovetail with Turkey's quest to develop its knowledge sector. Just as Turkey's first nano satellite manufactured at the Istanbul Technical University was launched in space by the Indian Space Research Organization in 2009, our economic partnership can soar high. The Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, looks forward to the guidance of Prime Minister Modi and President Erdogan to implement our joint development vision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Shobana Kamineni. His Excellency, 
President Erdogan of the Republic of Turkey is the first president of Turkey who's elected by popular vote and he's taken significant steps towards the development of efficient relations with many countries through his rational foreign policy. May I request His Excellency, President Erdogan, to please address the gathering. Değerli dostum, My Başbakan Modi, Sayın friend, Bakanlar, Prime Minister Modi, Türk ve Distinguished Ministers, Valuable Representatives of the Turkish and Indian Business Communities, Distinguished Guests, I greet you all with love. Değerli dostum, Başbakan Modi ile birlikte, My friend, Hindistan, Prime Minister Türkiye, Modi and I, iş formuna iştirak etmekten are very happy to attend the India-Turkey Business Summit. Together with DAIC, Foreign Economic Relations Board, and FIKI, uh, this meeting is organized, and I hope that this meeting will be a very fruitful one for the business communities of both countries. This meeting brings together uh, very distinguished representatives of the Turkish and Indian uh, business worlds, and I believe that this will mark a new era uh, of business relations. Uh, since India gained independence, our relations were based on friendship. Economic uh, cooperation uh, will be further deepened and diversified. This is our sincere wish, and we are determined and committed to achieve this. I had the opportunity to meet Prime Minister Modi before the forum, and we agreed on the fact that we should increase and develop our business relations and economic relations. Today, we will have a further opportunity uh, later today to discuss them further. If we can prepare the basis for this, and if we uh, can also start the comprehensive economic relations uh, negotiations, that would be great. And we also know that the Turkish Indian Business Council should uh, be a more active mechanism to deepen our relations. The last Turkey-India Joint Economic Committee meeting was held on uh, 2014. And uh, it would be also good to start the free trade agreement uh, talks. This would also add further momentum to our relations. Fiki uh, would like to open an office, a liaison office in Istanbul, and DEIC and Turkish Ex Exporters Assembly uh, should also open a liaison office here in India. N these are the mechanisms uh, that and opportunities that will help further deepen the relations. Our trade volume as of end of 2016 has reached uh, 6.5 billion US dollars. We are sure uh, that this uh, is going to go up further and it will achieve its actual potential very soon. But it is for sure uh, that the bilateral trade volume um, is not to the favor of Turkey. That's a reality. As of last year, uh, the export was 652 million, and imports was um, 
5,757 million. So this is not sustainable for Turkey. That's why we have to increase reciprocal investments and the tra trade volume should be balanced as fast as possible. Steps should be taken to achieve that. With respect to Turkish companies' investment in India, it uh, was 212 million US dollars, whereas uh, the Indian investments in Turkey is 110 million US dollars. So there is a a difference. So Turkish and Indian companies do have investments in third countries. And we know that the figures are much higher when we take that also into consideration. Turkey is the world's 17th largest economy, and India is the seventh largest economy of the world. The potentials of both countries are known to us all. They are much higher. So I uh, call out uh, uh, the Indian companies um, uh, who would like to invest in Turkey. ISPAT and other uh, governmental agencies will do their best to give support to Indian co companies that would like to invest in Turkey. So including the Black Sea, the Middle East, Central Asia regions, Turkey is uh, an ideal hub for investment and production. So in order to make use of this potential, customs uh, duties and the relevant legislation should be completed. The needed infrastructure should be completed as soon as possible. We should alleviate the pressure of exchange rates. We should be able to use our national currencies for exports and imports. Therefore, relevant uh, departments, relevant agencies should contact each other and discuss these in depth. Turkey has got a large domestic market, a very young workforce, has got a disciplined uh, business community and competitive private sector. Therefore, Turkey has become an important economic player in the region. In the uh, last decade, uh, the Turkish economy has displayed a very stable um, growth. Between 2011 and 15, Turkey grew around 7.1 percent uh, every year. In 2016, despite all negative incidents, the economic growth achieved was 2.9 percent. In 2017 and 18, the Turkish economy is going to achieve a growth rate of 4.5 percent. And I personally believe that we can achieve even higher figures. All investors should uh, Rest assured that the competitive uh, competition rules exist in Turkey in the private sector. Our laws are regulated to enable investment in Turkey. Goods and services can be traded. Uh, in a free trade economy that exists in Turkey without any obstacles. We do attach great importance to structural reforms, and there are energy and infrastructure investments uh, realized in Turkey, and we continue with those investments. We connected Asia and Europe through the Marmaray and Eurasia tunnels under the sea. Osman Gazi Bridge is uh, the fourth bridge in the world with the largest suspension, with the largest uh, tower uh, width. And uh, there is also uh, the uh, Yavuz Sultan Selim uh, Bridge that is operating. That's the third bridge. And we are going to open the third airport very soon. 
1915, Gallipoli Bridge uh, and the foundations of that bridge were laid on the 18th of March in Çanakkale. We are continuing uh, working on the preparation of uh, Channel Istanbul. So from high-speed trains to dams, irrigation systems, we've got many other uh, giant projects in the pipeline. Turkey is the largest democratic country. India is one of the fastest growing free economy countries. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi in IT, in high tech and in uh, um, aerospace, India has made great progress and we really appreciate it. In all these sectors, we would like to further develop our cooperation with India as Turkey. I would like to put emphasis on this. Um, both countries, these two countries, can complement each other from R&D work to other fields of work. We can do a lot and we can invest together to enter the third country markets. The Turkish private sector, especially in the field of construction, they play a vital role in opening up to other markets in the world. So, Turkey has got the world's second contractors with 342 billion US dollars of trade of Hindistan volume. Uh, in the top 250 contractors list, there are 42 Hindistan Turkish contractors. The 100 Smart Cities project of India will help uh, with uh, India's development and uh, also with urban development. Turkish uh, contracting companies can contribute to this uh, project. There is also a huge untapped potential in the field of energy. India, India's role in energy is appreciated. Uh, renewables is an area that we can focus on and we can benefit from each other's experience. Nuclear energy is another field, of, another possible field of cooperation. Tourism could be another important uh, possible field of cooperation. Last year, we had 25 million tourists visiting Turkey. That's not an ideal figure for us at all. The number of Indian tourists is uh, 79,000. But we would like to see more Indian tourists in Turkey. We're going to put uh, uh, emphasis on the promotion. We have to encourage tour operators more and more. And there's an increase in the number of Indian families organizing wedding ceremonies in Turkey in recent years. Therefore, we would like to host more Indian tourists in Turkey in 2017. You can come to Turkey for honeymoon. We would like to host you in Turkey for honeymoon. Well, we, if we want uh, tourist numbers to increase, then that means we have to increase transport. So Atlas Jet and Turkish Airlines would like to increase uh, their number of destinations and flights. Uh, they share flights with Air India. So, it would be right if we could further develop uh, the uh, collaboration between Turkish Airlines and Air India. Prime Minister Modi has got the objective of uh, using tourism as one of uh, the driving forces of the economy. And I believe in that. Distinguished uh, Prime Minister, and the representatives of the business community. I hope that this business summit will uh, 
add another momentum to Turkey-India relations. As Turkey, we will be very determined to take the necessary steps to further uh, increase um, collaboration. We will fulfill our responsibility to further develop relations between two countries. I would like to take the opportunity to once again greet you all and wish you every success in your work. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, President Ardoğan, for your incisive, thought-provoking speech. And now I invite the driver of modern India, the man who is the embodiment of courage, compassion and conviction, has ensured that the wheels of progress move at a rapid pace, the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. Your Excellency, President, and my friend, Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey, distinguished ministers, members of the Turkish delegation, friends from the Indian business community, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to interact with the leading businessmen in today's forum. I extend a warm welcome to President Erdogan and all our Turkish friends present here. It is a pleasure to see a large number of business delegates accompanying President Erdogan. I'm also very happy to see the participation of many Indian business leaders. Friends, India and Turkey enjoy great historic and cultural Connect. We also share a common outlook on the present economic order in the world. Now, economic cooperation is becoming an important pillar of every bilateral relation. India and Turkey enjoy good economic ties. The growth in our bilateral trade over the years has been impressive. I understand that bilateral trade has increased remarkably since President Erdogan last visit, visited India. It has gone up from US dollar 2.8 billion in 2008 to 6.4 billion in 2016. <laughs> While this is encouraging the level of present economic and commercial relations is not enough against the real potential. Friends, India and Turkey are among 20 largest economies in the world. More importantly, both economies have shown remarkable stability, even volatile global economic conditions. Our economies are based on strong fundamentals, and for this reason, we are optimistic about our economic prospects. 
there is immense goodwill for each other between the people of the two countries. As we strive to build stronger political ties, the time has come to also make more aggressive effort to deepen the economic relations. We have a long history of doing business with each other. We have to build on this rich heritage. There is huge potential and opportunity to enhance the bilateral engagement. This is possible through trade and FDI inflows, technology tie-up, and cooperation on various projects. In this context, we have seen some increase in participation of Turkish companies in India. This has come through investment in blue chip Indian companies and FDI route in the last few years. However, such cooperation could go up to small and medium enterprises. Today's knowledge-based global economy is continuously opening new areas. We must factor this in our economic and commercial interactions. You can see that the governments of both sides are committed to provide a business-friendly environment. However, it is the business leaders such as you who have to turn the national glow into reality for mutual benefit of the two nations. Friends, the Indian political system is known for its vibrant, open, and participative democracy. Stability in political and administrative processes and rule of law are the hallmark of our system. And these are important con considerations for any serious long-term economic engagement. My government came to power in this very month, three years back. Since then, we have launched several initiatives to reform the economy and administrative processes. We have also launched several flagship programs like Make in India, Startup India, and Digital India. The results of this is already visible in the recovery of Indian economy. Today, Indian economy is the fastest growing major economy in the world. In addition to maintaining this pace, our focus is also to remove the inefficiencies from the system. We are in the process of building a new India. Therefore, our focus is on making it easier to work, particularly to, to do business. This includes reforming the policies, processes, and procedures. It also includes creating better conditions for domestic and foreign investment. We have achieved a lot of success and recognized on this front. Our global ranking has gone up on many partners and many parameters. However, this is an ongoing effort. Therefore, it has to continue. It is basically a shift in attitude and approach. The objective is to make India a better place to enable people realize their potential. 
This is required in particular to provide em employment and self-employment opportunities for our youth. The recent GST legislation is another such initiative of my government. It was an old demand to create a uniform and efficient business atmosphere in the country. I know that Turkish construction companies have successfully undertaken many construction and infrastructure projects in other countries. Our infrastructure requirements are enormous, including core as well as social and industrial infrastructure. We are keen to build it strong and build it fast. Turkish companies can easily participate in this task. Just to give you some examples, we have planned to build 50 million houses by 2022. For this purpose, we have repeatedly refined our FDI policy in construction sector. We are planning to metro rail projects in 50 cities and high-speed trains in various national corridors. We have targeted 175 gigawatt of renewable energy in next few years. In addition to generation of electricity, the issues of transmission, storage, and distribution are equally important for us. We are modernizing our railways and upgrading our highways. In the last three years, we have made maximum allocations for these two sectors. We are putting up new ports and modernizing the old ones through an ambitious plan called Sagar Mala. Similar focus is on upgrading the existing airports and putting up regional airports to enhance connectivity to the places of economic and tourist importance. The Turkish tourism sector is globally renowned. The number of Indian tourists going to Turkey has increased in the last few years. Turkey has also become a popular destination for shooting of Indian films and for television industry. While we should definitely encourage two-way tourism, the industry should explore wider possibilities in this area. One example could be to reach out to our regional film industry, which is equally vibrant. We are aware that India and Turkey are both energy deficient and our energy needs are ever increasing. Hydrocarbon sector is therefore a common area of interest for both countries. The same would also be relevant for solar and wind energy. Therefore, the energy sector becomes an important pillar of our bilateral relations. Mining and food processing are other areas with great promise. We can also pull together our strengths in the textile and auto sectors. Turkey has a strong manufacturing sector, and India 
is a low cost manufacturing hub. Besides the cost aspect, we have a large pool of skilled and semi skilled workforce and strong R&D capabilities. I am pleased to note that the mechanism of India-Turkey Joint Committee on Economic and Technical Cooperation is working well. In this next meeting, the committee could undertake a review of the measures to be taken for promoting two-way trade and investment. Similarly, I would also urge the chambers of commerce and industry of both sides to engage with each other proactively. Our processes should work closely both at the government and B2B level. I would like to thank President Erdogan, members of the delegation, and members of the Indo-Turkish Business Chambers for attending today's forum. This is really an ex excellent opportunity for bringing together the Indian and Turkish business community. Friends, let us work together for enhancing the level of our economic activities for welfare of our people. From the Indian side, I welcome you with open arms. I can say with confidence that India was never a more promising destination than it is today. <laughs> to make it even better, I assure you of my personal care and cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We thank the Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji, for his inspiring words. I'd now like to request the presidents of FICI, CII, ASOCHAM, and DEEK to please come up on stage for a photo opportunity with our global leaders. Please sit down, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And finally, a vote of thanks by Mr. Sandeep Jajodia, President, Asocham, and Chairman and Managing Director, Morning Group. Shri Narendra Modi. Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency, Mr. Rezep Tayyip Erdogan, Honorable President of Republic of Turkey, valued ambassadors, members of the visiting Turkish delegation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my proud privilege and pleasure to have been accorded an opportunity to extend a word of thanks. At the outset, we express a profound gratitude to His Excellency, Mr. Azeb Tayyip Erdogan, Honorable President of Republic of Turkey, for sparing his valuable time to grace this event and address this India-Turkey Business Forum. Excellency, your words of wisdom have been truly inspiring. You have also given us the contours of India-Turkey economic cooperation. We would like to express our very sincere thanks to Sri Narendra Modi, Honorable Prime Minister of India, for his gracious presence and for providing us a roadmap for furthering India-Turkey relationship. It is always such a delight to listen to our Honorable Prime Minister address for valuable insight. Honorable Sir, your presence today at this forum 
reaffirms the importance of bilateral ties and healthy economic relationship we intend to have between India and Turkey. Sir, India is poised to become one of the most powerful economies globally, and understanding the importance of bilateral ties with its foreign counterparts, we assure you our commitment on behalf of SHM and our fellow chambers to extend our support by joining hands with the government of India to play a vital role to further strengthen socio-economic and commercial relationships. Lastly, we, I thank all the senior officials of the Ministry of External Affairs, colleagues from the three chambers, and esteemed members of the visiting Turkish delegation who have really worked hard to make this forum a success, even in a short span of time. Once again, thank you all. Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Jerodia. Ladies and gentlemen, could I request all of you to please remain in your places while our dignitaries leave the days. With that, we come to the end of this very insightful and constructive discussion. Thank you all. Please remain in your places while our dignitaries leave the days. Have a wonderful afternoon.